All right, my friend, today we keep going on with our beautiful PC, and today we have to resolve this riddle. We have FT STR compare. So we have to reproduce the behavior of the function string compare. We can watch in our manual with man string compare, right? Here we have the prototype, so a function that takes two strings and returns an integer, okay? So let's watch very briefly with the command man three string compare how the function works. To use the original function, we have to include the string.h header file we will do in our exercise. And here we have the description of the function. The string compare function lexicographically compare the null terminated strings. And then we have the string compare function returns an integer greater than, equal to, or less than zero according as the string s1 is greater than, equal to, or less than the string true. Cool. So this function basically is making a um, comparison char by char of two strings and it's going to return back the value of the first non-matching chars, right? Let's watch the implementation of the code, so it's going to be vanilla easy for you. All right, here I have my program. As you can see, I have, as usual, a lot of comments, just to repeat what is inside the manual. Basically, if the strings are equal, we have a return value, which is zero. We have major than zero and minor zero if the strings are not equal. Here we have all the, um, the cases possible, right? When we have two strings which are equal, for example, like hello and hello, in this case, we have zero as a return value. Then we have two strings by which the first one is different from the second one. And we're going to return basically the difference between this char here, that in this specific case is a space, and the same char in the same position of the other string. In this case, is another L. So we have uh, 32 which is the value of the space minus l okay as you can see 32 is the value for the space char and 108 is the value of the char l so we get 32 minus 108 this is a negative value so the return number is going to be negative the opposite is true right in this case we have the first one which is a low and the second one is l in this case, we have not a space, but we have a zero. At the end of every string, we have um, backslash zero. So we get a this L and we make the subtraction with this backslash zero. So we have, again, 108 minus zero, which is the backslash zero. So we get plus 108 when we do string compare with these two strings, okay? That's basically the idea, right, of this little function. So here I have my main function in which I have a series of strings, essentially the ones I just showed you, and we're gonna very briefly understand what I wrote so we can understand the output. I declare these two strings, S and S1. S in this case is a low and S1 is a low. So we have two equal strings. Then I have a printf by which I print the two strings you see interleaved i have a new line character and then i call my function ft str compare as you can see here here is the real thing and then i call the other real function the one you can find in a string.h library right indeed here i've included the string.h header file so you see what i'm doing with these lines i'm just calling the real function and my function and check if the outputs match so if the function is correct so i do the thing with two equal strings with two different strings by which the first one is a low and the second one is l and for the opposite okay then i call the same functions with empty strings let's see the output so we can very well understand everything so you see what do we get we have the two strings hello and low my function is giving me back zero, and the real one is giving me back zero. Perfect. That's because these two strings are equal. So we reach the end of the string and we're gonna subtract the backslash zero here and the same char here. So zero minus zero is gonna be zero, of course. Then the first case, we have hello and hell. We reach this char here, hell, right? And then we subtract the backslash zero, which is in the same position of the other string. What do we get? We get 108 which is l minus 0 plus 108 perfect it works for both the same holds just inverted for these two strings right we get minus 108 for two empty strings we get 0 minus 0 namely 0 okay i think that's super easy right let's check the implementation of the function all right here my friend you have the implementation of the string compare function let's make it super clear let's Put down this main so we can see 
only the function. So let's jump into the function. I have a while loop. Inside my loop, I have a conditional expression, which is while at s1, namely while the char pointed by s1 is equal the char pointed by s2 and uh, at s1. This is kind of cryptic maybe by now. So we're going to forget about that. Okay. We're going to forget. What do you do? Well, you just keep going on in the string. You just keep going on in the string plus plus s1 plus plus s2. This is pointer arithmetic. Just simply increase the pointer searching for all the charts inside the strings, right? And of course, these pointers point to the respective same position, right? Of the strings. We have position zero, position one, position two, position three. Okay. Because we have the same plus one increment for every iteration. That's super easy for you by now. This loop is going to end when we are going to stumble into some charts which are different. Okay. So we're going to reach the return keyword that simply states, Hey, give me back the difference between the char in position S1, which is exactly where it has to be thanks to the loop minus S2. I think for you is super easy to understand. Maybe the only thing that you have to refine is this end at S1. What is that? Let's forget for a second about this at S1 and, and let's comment it. Okay. So we are going to comment it and we're going to forget about, it, okay. This is the new implementation of my function. I have while char of string one is equal to char in string two, increase the pointer of S1 and S2, and then you just give me back the result. Easy. Let's see how it works. You see, this time I have a segmentation fault, basically Y. Let's remove again this comment. And this time let's include again, as you can see, it works now, right? Like before, you just saw that. So why it works the way it works. Let me explain you better. Let's start from the two different strings. In this case, we have a low and a house. So we start our iteration searching for two different chars. Start from H is equal. Yeah. Keep going on. E is equal. Yeah. Keep going on. L the same. Keep going on. Boom. At a certain point, we stumble upon two different chars. As you know, the while loop ends and we return the value 108, which is the char L minus zero. Okay. The return value is going to be 108. Perfect. This is super easy. Other case flipped. That's exactly the same idea, right? We reach backslash zero in the first string minus 108. We get the value minus 108. Again, super easy for you. Where is the problem? Well, the problem is when we have two equal strings, for example, L and L. Look at that. We do the comparison char by char of the two strings. So H, E, L, L, O, then we reach backslash zero, which is equal in both, right? Zero is equal to zero through. So what, what we're going to do now? Well, we're going to keep going on. Okay. So we go outside the string, but this is not correct. Here we have to return zero. We finished our strings. So the iteration has to finish. So what do I do? Well, that's where this at S1 comes handy. See, this, this is only for when the strings are equal. Why? Well, every time I'm checking if the chars are equal, if the strings are different, this while loop is going to end no matter what. The only problem I showed you is only when the strings are equal. So I say, okay, all the chars are equal. I'm going to reach backslash zero, but are we sure that we are not at the last position? Because I need that we are not finished. So with this at S1 here, what is going to happen? When I am here at the last position, I'm going to say, okay, the char are equal backslash zero is equal to backslash zero. But I need also that this is not zero, right? Because zero is the false Boolean value as well. So the loop is going to decay here. It's going to decay. It's going to decay and we reach return at S1 minus at S2. What is that value? Well, it is zero. Exactly what I want. I don't need to put at S1 and at S2. I don't need both the values. I just need only one. This is going to be redundant. I don't need that. So you understand if you have different strings, the loop is going to end no matter what. It's going to end and this is easy. I'm going to loop until I stumble upon the different char. When strings are equal, I need this extra control that can be at S1 or at S2, mm, doesn't matter, to make the loop end. All right. That's it. 
that's super easy, I guess. This is uh, an easy function. And as you saw before, it uh, works pretty well. Cool. Now we can go on with our ft, str, and compare. Many functions indeed have this n or l just to add more safety to these functions. And in this case, we have to check at maximum and chars. So as usual, we're going to check in our manual, mat3, str, and compare. So you see here, the str and compare function compares not more than n chars. So my friend, what is going to be um, the um, difference between the previous one and this one? Very simply, we're going to add a check more. You see, I have while at s1 at is equal to at s2, namely while char of s1 is equal to char of s2. And we have not finished with our n, n is the number of chars that I want to check. And the same idea as before, right? When strings are equal, we have to at s1, right? If you add two equal strings, this piece of code is going to allow to stop the while loop. So the news here is the minus minus n. Now you may wonder why the prefix minus minus n. If I want to check, for example, like in this case, for chars, this loop is going to go on at maximum three times, you see, because I have this prefix minus minus. First of all, let's watch the main so we can understand better the things I'm going to explain to you. So as usual, we have two strings, s and s1. The first one is the strange, you see, the strange string with a tilde in this position. And then basically the idea was of before, right? I'm not wasting your time explaining. You can screen and understand, but that's easy. From the output, you can easily understand what is going on. So let's run the code. Here it comes. As you can see, this time I have these two strings, L tilde or word and L world. The string compare real function is going to give me back 18. Why 18? Well, you see, I have to check till for chars. So we reach this tilde and this L. We know from before that L is 108. And what is tilde? Well, tilde is 126. So 126 minus 108 is going to be 18, right? That's exactly the result we have. As well, we check for differences up to four chars here. So we reach maximum this L. Which is L? We have this L 108 minus space, which is 32, right? So that's exactly the value we get, right? 108 minus 30. Yeah, that's it. 108 minus 32. Then we um, have the same idea. It's going to subtract 108, which is this L to 32, which is the space here. We get minus 76. And then we have, uh, okay, you got the point, right? This is how the function works. Now we're going to change the number of charts we want to compare from four to, I don't know, three maximum. Okay, let's run again the code. This time we're going to compare up to maximum three. So we reach here, maximum L. There are no difference, right? Up to the third char, L, L, zero. Again, here, L, L, zero, zero, zero. Okay, that's how the function works. If you're up with, I don't know, six, Let's try this time. We have again the same results. The first not matching char in this case is again this tilde and the L, of course, is the same as before. So 126 minus 108. Okay, so super easy, I guess. Now, why the prefix? Namely, if here I have the four, maximum four chars that I want to check. Why the prefix? Well, you saw before that I will reach this tilde maximum with the n equal four. I reach this tilde here. And here, this L. What is this tilde inside the hello? My friend, this tilde here inside the hello is S plus 3. You see? S plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. So here, I will reach, with this expression, maximum S plus 3, which is exactly the last chart that I want to reach. If here I have, for example, um, the postfix decrement, I'm going to do this loop four times. So let's check the output. So you see this time by chance is gonna work the same, but let's dig a little bit. This time we're gonna put three. So I want to compare only the first three chars. As you can see, this time is different. Why? Well, because I'm gonna compare till the fourth because I have a post fit decrement. So the loop is gonna go on maximum four times. That's exactly what the loop is gonna do. So I'm gonna reach this tilde, even though this tilde is the fourth char. So you see, I get two different results from the real one, which is correct. It's going to compare only till this L. 
namely these three first charts, which are equal, so it is correct. While mine float function is going to give me back 18, which is exactly tilde minus L. So that's what this postfits decrement is doing. This is a bug. I need to do this loop maximum three times in this case. Three times when I have four charts that I want to check. Because I want to check S plus zero, S plus one, S plus two, S plus three. These are four charts. Okay, cool. That's the little uh, thing that I think uh, it's important to know about this exercise. For the rest, I don't think it is complicated, right? What do you think? All right, my friend, that's it for these two exercises. Enjoy.